Welcome to the video for the Cure HHT iPhone app. My name is Peter Lowers. I work for Arbor Moon Software and I am the lead designer and chief architect for this app uh, from Arbor Moon Software. And we have with us Dr. Jeff Taro. Uh, he is a professor from otolaryngology at the University of Michigan. And he's also the associate chief medical information officer for the University of Michigan as well as being one of the physicians that works in their HHT clinic. So uh, welcome, Jeff. And we're going to do a, a really brief walkthrough of the Cure HHT app and uh, cover the, the, the features that are in the app and good ways to use the app. So uh, what we're looking at is the app itself. Um, downloaded from the App Store. Downloaded yeah. from the App Store, indeed. And... So uh, as with any app, all you need to do, tap on the app. And, um, and now we're in the, the first welcome screen. So uh, welcome to the Cure HHT app. And you know, for people that are unsure of what HHT is, if you've just downloaded the app and, and you were, it caught your eye for some reason or you know somebody that has it, there's a section uh, right on the welcome screen that is what is HHT. And, when you tap on that, you're going to see two screens that describe first what HHT is, and then um, you, the second screen, uh, what kind of treatments are available for HHT. So you don't have to go in and set up the app to get some, some, some uh, information about HHT itself. Um, but then uh, once you do and you decide that this is an app that you want to to use, you can just tap the back button. And then you swipe to get from one. You can screen. swipe to get from one to the other, yep. Great. I should notice, uh, note, Pete, Peter, that uh, when I first launched this app, I uh, skipped over or moved the screen. It says allow notifications. This app will sort of schedule in, within itself, schedule you in certain notifications. So they should go ahead and click That's allow right. notifications, right? So notifications, um, you know, this app is able to notify you of a couple of things, and we're going to get to those in the setup process. But briefly, uh, reminders basically for things that you've set up in the app that are worth reminding about. So if you want those reminders, then uh, you will have to allow notifications. Okay. So when that when that question comes up, uh, if you're okay with that, just a click, just tap on the allow button, and then uh, you'll move forward. So so now um, there are two th things that you can do from this point. If you haven't used the app before. Um, and you need to set the app up, the, the red button on the bottom that says, I am new to the app, will let you do that. Um, if you have used the app before and you've saved backup data, let's say you just bought a new iPhone XS, right. and you need to move the data from the app to the new iPhone XS, uh, you would tap on the import backup data, which would um, tell you the process of restoring that backup to get you exactly where you were before. Later on this video, we tell them how to create that backup. We do indeed. So we'll skip that now and we'll go skip right that into now. the app. Yep. So let's, let's, we're new to the app. So we're going to tap on, I am new to the app. Um, as, as you are more than familiar with, if you've been a, a mobile device user, uh, this is, um, the general information Disclaimer to uh, that you need to read, of course, and then uh, once you have done so, tap I understand and agree, and uh, you'll move forward in the app. So like, this app isn't designed to give people very specific advice to themselves. It's more of a generic app in terms of recommendations. Yeah, so just just for people to, to understand. Yeah, that, I, um, I think there are a couple of brief points, that being the first one, which is this this app does not take the place of your physician in any way, shape, or form. This app is... A, is, is a purpose to be able to help the HHT patient be able to manage their HHT in a, in a better way and to be able to share the information about their condition with right. their healthcare provider. Uh, the other thing uh, that I want to briefly note is uh, there is no data uh, that gets sent to anybody. So your information is always private. You are allowed to share information and we'll show you how to do that. And that very much occurs through email and you're very much in control. So behind the scenes, there's no information transfer of any information, personal or not, that you've entered in this app. So uh, th those are really the two things to note here. And uh, so we can understand and agree. And now we're going to get into the four uh, setup screens. So um, what I want to sort of emphasize here is, uh, you know, it's it's good to be uh, accurate with the information that you put in here. Uh, we're not 
guessing that you don't know who you are by asking you your first and last name but um, and, and your email. But as you'll see later in the app, uh, we we give you the ability to use this information to sort of help uh, simplify and automate the process. So, you know, later when, you know, you want to share information, whether it's with yourself or you'll even see at the end of the setup process, you know, if you've entered a dummy email inf- email address for yourself, then you're not going to get that information that you like. We can't pre-populate that for you. So, um, you know, that being said, um, I don't think we can do that. Just make sure they do this. Just make sure you put in your email. <laughs> Fine. Don't forget to do that. Um, all right. So we can put our date of birth in. Yep. Date of birth and gender uh, above as well. Um, so the only last thing uh, before we move on is uh, a, a brief explanation of uh, is sort of needed here as to this last question. So um you know, the app's purpose for the HHT patient is to allow you to basically uh, give you an electronic logbook that that helps you record the, the, the things that are happening with your condition so that you have the ability to refer to them later, share them with your physician. And of course, one of the most important things that you're that you'd want to track is your bleeding and the if, frequency. If you're getting those bleeds, right? It, that's right. That's right. And and you know the the relevant information about those bleeds, right? The the duration and the frequency and the severity uh, are all important things. Uh, so the w- one big purpose of this app is to allow you to track that, so that as you have procedures or done or interventions done, uh, you have a, a way to track how well those are working for you right. as, one, as one thing. And, and, and Peter, just so you know, there are, there are young patients that get one nosebleed a year or, or, or no nosebleed. So of course, they'll probably, sure. this won't be that valuable to them, That's but right. there are other people uh, that, that may have much more frequent nosebleeds. That's right. So for some people, they'll use it as an information resource and we'll see how to do that. Um, but if you are a patient that suffers from a, um, a fair, either fair frequency or severity of, of bleeding, it's nice to have a way that very purposefully tracks what's going on so that you can give your healthcare provider, your team, uh, the best information possible for them to be able to help you. So, you know, I think that was one of the big envisionments of, of this app is, is to give those people that have the severe condition uh, the best help possible. So what's so, the difference between track every bleed and track per interval and which one will most people use? You so, think? so, so, so track every bleed allows you to uh, actually record if you bleed three times today to record the specific information about each of those bleeds. And the patients that are going to use this option are the patients that are either part of a research study or the patients that really want to keep a very a, a, a very accurate log of their condition and, and how they're doing, um, you know, are we encourage you to talk to your physician? And if your physician uh, has a preference as to as to how they want to see this this information, um, you know, that's the other important factor. So the second uh, the second option is to track per interval, and and this was built in here because it's up to this point, tracking uh, per interval has been the common way physicians like, have asked patients. Yeah, like every, what, over the last month or so. How, that's right. How you know it's been done. That's and, what I ask most patients, you know. And, you know, honestly, that's because a tool like this kind of hasn't existed. So unless you took a notebook and logged everything yourself. Right. Right. Uh, but that, w- that didn't necessarily mean that you were logging the same kind of information that your physician's going to ask you, which is why uh, the ESS... Uh, the, 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 the questions that were developed for this ESS profile, uh, were specific and, and very purposefully thought out to ask the questions the physician's going to want to know. So we should, we should probably note that ESS stands for epistaxis, which is another word for nosebleed, right? Severity score, epistaxis, severity score. That's right. So I, I'll say that probably most of my patients will want to use the track per interval on the ESS. So maybe we should collect that and, and, uh. Well, we're going to start with the track every bleed. That's right. That's right. So, so, we'll, go back to that. so we'll definitely come back though and see what the tracking per interval looks like as we as we look at the actual entry of of the the data as we do it. So go to the team now. Yeah. Guys? So let's let's check out team. You can do that by tapping on team or tapping the next button at the bottom. And here is where you're able to enter uh, your 
information for any of these healthcare providers that you work with. So if you have um, a hematologist, for example, you can enter that person's uh, information. Um, we're, we're, we're giving them a photo, which is a nice thing to do if you have one, but certainly not necessary. But, you're, but you know, entering their name um, and entering their phone and email give you good, quick access to that. But the email, most importantly, so that if you'd like to share any of the information from the app with this provider, that email is what we'll use to help pre-populate an email for you so you don't have to manually enter it later. Okay, and then um, if they um, want to add another provider outside the special list of specialists, they can they can still, tap the plus uh, button. And the plus button. That's right. That adds an other at the that, bottom. That right? adds an other, and you, you simply go into the other and you and you say who that is. So so on that note, you know your team doesn't necessarily have to be medical professionals. We've pre-populated a list of common medical professionals that you may have if you have HHT, but you may want to enter a family member that is um, someone who, who it, you know, you're working with with your condition. Maybe they're, you know, your, your personal, uh, you know, interventional uh, sort of helper, you know, whether it's a, a parental figure or someone like that or a okay. friend. So you can enter whoever you want. And then when you're done with this, and mind you, you can always come back and edit these lists. Right. So the profile and the team, uh, you'll be able to come back at any point and, and adjust what you've put in here. So uh, the next one is really interesting and, and uh, is a really, really nice part of this app, which is the interview. So um, the interview only happens when you set the app up. And basically what we're doing with the interview is asking you a bunch of questions to help uh, – basically give you know a the the cure hht organization the ability to give you some high level counseling based on how you answered questions so if you tap on next or you tap on an interview you'll see um that we have just a, a series of questions and all you have to do is run down and answer them and it's okay if you don't know the answer to all right. of these uh you know that's perfectly fine um, These would be the questions that I would ask a patient if they came into my office to get a sense of their uh, status with, with HHT right. and, and whether they've had screening tests. So, okay, they'll click uh, the answers to each of these questions. So they're going to go through these. And, you know, the other thing, you know, on that note, I'm glad you brought it up, is that, you know, one of the things that we're, that we're hoping this app is able to do is reach uh, a new group of, of patient who doesn't necessarily know they have HHT and they've They've come across the app, and and this is a way for you know. Let's say you have nosebleeds. Um, you know, a lot of us in our life have 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 had nosebleeds, but that doesn't, of course, mean we have HHT, right? Um, so it gives us it gives anybody the ability to go through and and answer these questions, and then you'll see by the answers that we get, uh, you know, will help kind of steer you. So they're tailored responses. So when you answer these questions, you're going to get an email with a tailored response. So that's right. You're going to learn something about HHT and how the diagnosis is made if you're not sure whether you have it. That's right. That's right. Um, I should also note that if you've never had any genetic testing yourself or family members, you can leave questions two and three blank. But if you do know what kind of genetic tests you've had and, there's a, and those results, you can answer those. I'm going to just answer yeah. uh, a few questions, yeah, you know, yes or no, um, and uh, not really reading them terribly uh, much so hopefully they make sense but uh, we'll go through those questions just so that we can get to the end and um, and now we'll hit next when we hit next uh, it's going to uh, send well actually when we hit next we're going to go to notifications yeah, that's first that's right. so then, so if you answered allow notifications when you first open the app then this section uh, is where those notifications are going to come into play so um, so for example, if you, let's say you've decided that you want to track your bleeding per bleed, uh, then, then the nosebleed reminder is going to every day in this particular case at 7 PM, just throw a reminder up on your phone that says, Hey, don't forget to enter information about today's bleeds. If you've chosen the other entry method, which is the interval entry method, then what's going to happen is your reminder is going to come at the interval that was selected. So if you choose, if you want to enter uh, monthly, then it then then it's going to look at the last time you entered data, and then at 8:30 p.m. now in this case, one month later, it's going to give you that reminder. Hey, it's time to enter your monthly 
uh, your monthly information. So, um, and the same thing for tests. I guess I yep. can get a reminder about medical tests. How um, you know, one that needs to be scheduled, and then and then the second one there, the second box with a one in it would say you've scheduled it for a certain date. How far in advance that date do you want to be notified that to, you got, to actually you got go? The test tomorrow. That's yeah, right. You got the yep. test tomorrow. So we, we thought this, that, yeah. yeah, we thought this was really helpful for for two very different things. You know, uh, one thing is you know a lot of these tests are hard to get in. Uh, to get scheduled, you need to you need to schedule them in months in advance, and and so uh, we wanted to remind you if you know if your physician says I would like you to get this test every year or every two years. Uh, hard to remember. It, that is hard to remember for patients, especially if you get a lot of medical testing done, which is very possible if you have a. Uh, a a more of a severe case of HHT. So yeah, these this are, will, these are important tests. To get yeah. To and, and it is important to stay on top of them. So, so the first test will, again, will remind you of how, uh, if you haven't scheduled one and you need to, to schedule it, uh, relatively soon, it will remind you to go make that schedule. And then if you, you know, once you make that, you know, there's a place where you can put the date you're having that exam right in the app. And then the second reminder would be, Hey, don't forget, you've got a, a chest CT scan tomorrow. So, uh, and then the last reminder is a reminder to back up your data. Uh, and I want to make an important point here. Um, based on the, the terms and service conditions for backing up your device with Apple on iCloud, uh, personal medical data is not allowed to be backed up when you do your your whole device backup. So it doesn't back up to my laptop or my desktop. It doesn't back up to your laptop. It doesn't back up to iCloud. Um, we're not allowed to back that information up because it's per, it's it's personal medical data. So um, in order to back this data up, so that it, if you get a new device, for example, you'd like to con obviously you don't want to throw the data that you've compiled away. Uh, this is the way to do that. So. Uh, it's a little wordy, but that's because we wanted to make it really clear what you have to do. And in this particular case, uh, you know, we're also allowing you to choose an interval for since your last backup, when is your next notification? Remind and to remind me. you, because, yeah. you know, it's easy we, to forget. It's easy to forget backing all okay. of computer stuff up. And that's why, Got you it. know, Apple likes to do automated stuff and we can't do that here. So instead, we're going to give you a reminder at the interval of your choice. So. Um, so now we're done with the setup process. There's one last thing that happens. And as you tap done, what we, what we're doing here is we're going to your email program and we're, we're putting together an email that's pre-addressed to you. So the email address that you put for yourself is what we're pre-addressing this. And what this is, is, is Cure HHT's response to your interview. So uh, you'll see that it goes question by question, and based on how you answered those questions, uh, Cure HHT has uh, pre-formulated a response to each of those answers uh, to give you more information, to give you an idea of the importance of these things, as well as to suggest uh, not paths of treatment, of course, because really that's for your your medical team to decide, but but really a good way to to educate you on treatments that are available, but also point you at places uh, or point you towards a type of medical professional that you may want to begin talking to if you're not already. So, um, you know, it's a really helpful way for to kind of give you an idea of some of the paths that you should take right. based right. on how you answer these questions. So I, I would encourage patients to save this email forward to themselves a couple times, print them, print it out. Sure. It's a great, it's a great resource. And of course you can read it on your iPhone. Or, or at home. Well, right. So in the upper right hand corner, you'll see uh, in Apple's mail program, that's where your send button is. So as soon as you send it, it's going to actually send all of this. You don't have to read it all right now. It's going to send it to your email and you're going to, you know, when it comes in your inbox, read it at your, at your leisure. I completely agree with you. I think it's information that's worth saving. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, of course, feel free to print it, but that's, that is a, a really nice way to sort of give you some high level you know, advice that's tailored to you based on on what you know or don't know or have had had tested and not or not tested uh, up until this point. So um, I'll be a little spontaneous here and skip ahead. And I haven't told you I'm going to do this, but 
don't don't panic if you lose that email because a lot of that content is covered under the bottom right the tab that says frequently asked questions. Yeah, that's a great point. So so don't uh, don't worry about that. You can read uh, most of that. It won't be tailored necessarily to your answers, but a lot of it's right there. Yep. So I think that concludes the setup portion, and now we're going to go into uh, what we're looking here at the app and as well, um, you know, how to, to jump in and start using it. So, uh, so let's go do that now. So we've just finished the onboarding process and we've sent ourselves the, um, the answers to the questions that we were asked. And now we come to the screen that, that's asking you how your energy level is. And this screen you're gonna see every time you open the app for the first time on a day. So, uh, so this is just a way to, for you to, to do a, a general record collection of how you're generally feeling. You tap on one of the smiley faces and then you tap save and then you come into the app. So tomorrow when you come into the app, you're gonna see that again. If you come in later today, you won't. You've answered that today. Um, if you notice in the upper left-hand corner where it says energy, you see that the icon represents your answer. And if somehow you wanna change your answer for, for the day, uh, simply tap back on that energy and you can uh, then change your answer. And then you'll notice that that updated there. So this is the main place that when you run the app you're going to come to and what we're looking at here is a calendar and obviously and the calendar is is there to help you show how you've tracked the recording of your blood loss on a daily basis and as we talked about uh, when we set up the app there are two ways to do that there is the recording of every bleed and there's also the the the, the general recording of your how you've been bleeding over a course of time. So uh, when we when we set up the app, we set it up to record every bleed, and we're gonna now show you uh, all you have to do to start recording every bleed. And all you have to do is tap on a day that you wanna record a bleed for. And now you're gonna be presented with a really quick series of questions about, about each and every bleed that you actually have. So. Uh, if you have three bleeds in a given day, you can record the the data on how those each of those bleeds looked and roughly what time they happened just so that you have a, a good way to collect that information. So the first section is how long did this nosebleed last and you simply tap on the appropriate interval. The second section is uh, at its worst point during the bleed, how would you describe the intensity of the bleed? Uh, did you seek medical care for this bleed? And then the last two questions are a uh, general repeat in a different way of the first two questions. And that's for, uh, you know, if you're doing the, um, if you're entering every bleed for a research study, which some of you will be doing, uh, this helps sort of verify and solidify the data that you've been, that you, that you answered above. So uh, again, a, a question about um, rating the overall severity and then entering in minutes how long the nosebleed lasted will then verify the answers above for, for research purposes. And then, and then when you're done with this in the upper right hand corner is uh, the save button. So you tap on the save button. Yep. And then what you come to is you don't go back to the calendar. You're looking now at your bleeds for April 1st. And if you notice the plus button in the upper right hand corner, uh, you can tap the plus and say, I want to add another bleed for April 1st. And you'll notice the time shifted to 1215, but you're going to want to make that whatever, um, you know, whatever time it was, obviously. And now when you say save, you'll see that that got added to the list for 4-1. So on 4-1 now, we've shown that we bled twice and that will get um, up that will get reflected properly in the calendar so to go back to the calendar from here the back button in the upper left hand corner will take you back to the calendar and now you'll see on april 1st that uh the the that date on the calendar is filled with red um showing that you from a comparative standpoint it was a big bleeding day for you and in the bottom of that that calendar day you'll notice that you have two drops of blood and that means that you entered uh two bleeds uh let's tap on april 2nd and enter um a bleed for april 2nd and then you can kind of see how that looks on the calendar so we're just going to do the same thing we did before 
and we're gonna say save and you see it appear in the list here. And when we go back to the calendar, you'll see that on April 2nd, uh, you see the solid red and the bright red means that we're entering our information on a per bleed basis. We'll see how that looks in comparison to entering over an interval. But, but it didn't fill up anywhere near as much as the first in terms of the red fill. And that's because comparatively, you bled much more on the first of April than you did on the second. And this gives you a good overall look at how your bleeding is going from day to day. And if you're tracking on a daily basis, uh, that just helps, you know, that just helps you from a, from a thought process of you think back and say, oh yeah, Sunday I, I did have a really bad day and then on Monday it was much better. And you can tell that just by glancing at this, you don't have to go in and look at every bleed to see that. Yeah. So, so there won't be also later on the app, there won't be a graphical display of those bleeds if you collect them every day, but you can sort of visually see at least one on, with this calendar month by month or sort of day by day in a, in a particular month how bad they are. Absolutely. And, and that's that's one of the things that, that uh, you know, we like about how we design this as a group is that you can, uh, when you're entering this per bleed data, you can get a really nice quick overview month by month without having to try to graph and go into each day and, and look at things. So I'm, we're thinking that probably most people will want to use the sort of interval, like recording every month, generally how their nose bleeds it, are. Um, but per certainly people, if they're on a study and they're asked to use this app in a study to collect nosebleeds every day, this would be the tool that would be used to collect every every nosebleed. I think that that makes a lot of sense to me. You know, the one thing that that I might add to the user is that, you know, you re refer to guidance from your physician. If your physician would like you to enter, obviously, if you're in a research study, you, you'll be pointed towards this every bleed. If your physician would ask, like, like you to do the interval because that's the way that they are used to tracking your progress, then I would follow that. And then after that, I, I think personal preference. If you're, a, if you're a, the type of person who wants to be very specific in the recording of, of how, you're, how you're bleeding, uh, maybe yep. this is a new condition for you and you want to be a little more vi vigilant and specific about, uh, about tracking what's going on with you, then the, this, this data entry method may be a, a, one, a better one for you. If you're not interested in coming into the app every time you bleed to record how it went when it's done, which is very understandable, then the interval seems to be right. more likely to be your, your style of entry. So then we'll show them how to do that next? Is that yeah, right? so in order to change, uh, so we've entered a couple of the of this per bleeds, but let's say you entered a couple and you decided, you know what, I think I wanna switch to the interval method. In the upper right-hand corner, you'll see profile. And when you go into profile, you'll come back to, and we're going to go over these screens at the end. These are these are are, are roughly the screens, and they look just like what we entered when we set up the app. So you'll notice at the bottom of this one, we had selected track every bleed. Now we're going to switch to track per interval, and and so you'll also notice there's a there's a a button here that says one month, and this isn't forcing you to track. In that particular method, what this does is is determine from a notification standpoint when your reminder should be sent. So if you've indicated that you'd like to track once a month, then we're going to send you that that reminder one month after the last time you entered your data. Great. That it's time to enter more, you know, your next month's worth of data. But uh, again, that's from a notification perspective only. So when we're done with this, now we, we in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see the save button. So we'll tap save. And now we're back at our dashboard. So um, we're going to traverse forward in months now. And here's June. And let's tap on June 1st. And you'll see that we have a different entry method now. So we have some different questions. And if any of you, you have um, participated in what's called the ESS survey, yeah, for your nosebleeds, yep. uh, this these are exactly the questions that you would have been answering, and so these are identically replicated within this app. So the first question is, how often do you typically bleed? You know, is it is it very infrequently, less than once per month, or does it go up to even several times per day as your typical bleed? So. Uh, if you look back and say, well, I tend to bleed, you know, really sometimes it's a lot and sometimes it's a little and you sort of in your mind average it out to maybe several per week, you know, there's that answer for that or once per month or, you know, whatever that answer, whatever that answer is that makes sense to you. 
And then the second question, how long does your typical nosebleed last? So if, if every now and then you have a gusher nosebleed, um, or I'm sorry, if every now and then you have a, a really long bleed, like a 60 minute bleed, but in general, they're between you know 10 and 15 minutes, then six to 15 is really gonna be your answer. So again, we're not looking for worsts, we're looking for averages here. And then as far as the, the average intensity of your nosebleed, uh, really there are, there are two choices. Uh, you know, it's typically really bad bleed. If your bleeds are typically really, really bad, then you're going to answer the, the gushing or pouring. And if they're not so bad, uh, typically, then you're going to answer the first one. And then again, you'll enter save in the upper right-hand corner. You'll just tap on save. And now what you're going to see is a different treatment of this, of this calendar. So, you know, in looking at this calendar, let me quickly describe what you're seeing here. Just by looking at this, I can tell that on June 1st, you started this block of, of data entry uh, because we have the, the dark line around the first, and then we have that gray line that runs behind all the days that runs off to the right of the first through the second, all the way through those weeks until the 30th, where we have another dark line around the 30th, and then we don't have that line continuing. So I know that in this particular entry, we could have gone into July, uh, but we went from June 1st to, to June 30th, and I, and I can tell that just by looking at the screen. And then the other thing I can tell is uh, because these calendar days are now done in pink, I know that this is done with the ESS data entry and not done uh, with the with the track per bleed. So the track per bleed is always going to be red and the track per interval or the ESS tracking is always going to be done in pink. And you you know again because you always have the ability to go back to your profile and switch your data collection method, uh, you can have some calendar uh, months where you have a mixture if that's how you wanted to track as you can see here in September uh, some of the data that we entered ahead of time shows that we had some small interval entries and then we had some per bleed entries, you know, mixed together. So you're able to keep going back and forth and switching and this is how that uh, that looks on the calendar. So now, uh, before we leave this dashboard section with the calendar, you know, it's great to see what you entered, but what if you wondered what that data looked like later? So we let's say we came back to September and you wondered, oh, what did I enter? from that interval perspective from the first to the fourth, all you have to do is tap on any one of those days in that interval. Uh, in this case, we tapped on the fifth, which was a pro entry, but if we had tapped on any one of the days, yeah, let's see, one through four, you'll see that you'll see this pink, the, the, the pink surround for the day, and you'll see what we entered for our values. Uh, you know, this one was a typically gushing or pouring. It lasted on average from 31 to 60 minutes and we had several per day. So, so this is obviously a, a pretty intense uh, average situation, but all you have to do is tap on any day to see the, the data that was put in on that day. And if you tap on a, a, a day that has no data, you'll be allowed to enter data for that day. So if there's no data entered already, then you can add data and, and you can add a, a new bleed situation. And if there is data, you're allowed to look at that data. So. Uh, the pills that are in in gray at the bottom on the calendar, those are days in the future. And of course, it doesn't make sense that we can enter data uh, for future, for bleeds that we haven't had yet. So we kind of like to show where that where where that limitation is, so you, you can't go forward. So, all right. So that's pretty much the calendar section of the app. Um, the the, the dashboard is divided into two sections: um, your daily nosebleed data, which is by default what it comes up to. Um, but the other section of your dashboard is the test schedules, and, and we're going to flip over to that now. What this section is here for is, is it's, it's a really convenient place where for the really important exams uh, that you want to stay on top of and your physician wants you to stay on top of, this is a really nice place to enter the scheduling of those. So. Um, when you go see your physician and your physician says, oh, I want you to get um, yearly chest CT scans, at least from here on moving forward, you're allowed to enter the day of your, your last one um, and you're allowed to set the interval 
And then what what the app will do is if you um, you've if in your notification settings, let's say, which you did when you set the app up, you said you wanted to be notified five months before a scheduled test because some of these tests take a while to be able to schedule, then you'll get um, a notification reminder as well as you'll see that the entry for the 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 date says unscheduled you'll want you know it's a reminder for you to go schedule that important exam so that you're having it on the interval that your physician wants you to have it on so which eat with each of these uh with each of these tests you have the ability to enter your last test um the interval that you want that your physician wants you to have the test in and if you have entered you've made that appointment then you'll be able to enter that date in this where it says next. You'll be able to enter where that 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 exam is going to take place where you've scheduled it. And then if there are tests in here that you don't want to get a notification for, um, just tap the red bell and make it gray. And then you, you're still welcome to enter information about it, but you won't get notified um, that you either need to make the appointment or that you need to go to the appointment, which were the two different notifications that you set up in your profile when you when you set the app up. So this is really meant to just be a, a convenience for people to be able to keep track of which exams they need and the frequency in which they need them and to help make sure that they make those appointments on time. So so that's pretty much our dashboard. Um, you know, so here we've got the the uh, the entry of your of your bleeding, but what about the you know the entry of the testing that you have done, and and being able to look and see all of all of uh, the result the the results of that testing? That's our next tab on the bottom, which is data and tests. So we're going to tap on data and tests, and now we see. Um, the list of all of the information that we've already put into this app. This list will show you days that you entered blood loss data, but it also will show you uh, days that you had a test of some sort. And so let's talk about what those tests are that you can record. If you tap on enter new data tests, these are the four areas of testing data that you can you can record information for. So we have imaging and radiology. We have procedures and interventions. Uh, we have lab data. And if you've had a, a blood or iron transfusion or infusion, you can enter that information as well. So uh, let's start with the imaging and radiology. And then once you select that, you'll, you'll tap the enter new data tests button at the bottom. And what we have here is the ability to add uh, radiology imaging information for any of these areas so you can if you had more than one test on a day you can choose more than one of these values um, so I could have had a chest CT scan and a brain, a brain MRI um, and then of course you can also uh, change the day so of course if I had this test on a different day I can adjust the date on the top of which day um, I want to enter the information for Sliding your finger back and forth on the day will let you quickly move through the the calendar so you don't have to tap on the left and right arrows. So what we're what we were saying here is we had a chest CT scan on on July 29th of this year. The other thing that's really nice about this app is if you have the the results on on paper uh, or you have them uh, let's say in your email you were you were emailed the results and you save them to your photo library. You can actually put those results into the app, and then if there's a point later that you want to share them with yourself or with any of your providers, uh, you know you're able to do that. So by tapping the upload button, right. So here we're so we can take a picture of the report now. If it's one mm -hmm. page, somehow you oops, you oops. brushed the back. Sorry, that's right. Um, if it's one page, it's uh, simpler to do. I, I would tell patients probably they want to, uh, if it's a two-page report, at the very least, uh, copy uh, or, or take a picture of the impression or the summary of the report if it's a two-page report. If it's a one-page report, take a picture of the entire page. Yeah, so that's a really great point. So, so you can do one of two things. You can either lay the pages out side by side and take one wide picture, just make sure that you, you know, your, your, your phone camera is up high enough that you can see all of them. Or, 
or that's a, a great idea ultimately of take a picture of the summary page if you if you're not able to do that so that you have the most important one at this point we're um, we're limiting for the size of the app perspective um, and the management of that data we're limiting it to one image per per test that you put in here uh, and we're gonna we're gonna get some feedback on how well that goes and and that may be something that we uh, that we make a decision on in the future to, to change depending on how that works out so when I upload it, I'll be able to upload from my library of photos. That's so, right. So if so you I want to take a picture first. You can also and, use the camera. Oh, so if you right. tap upload, um, you'll see that we're going to ask you, would you like to choose from your photo library or would you like to take a picture? So if you choose, if you say camera, then your phone will switch to the, you know, switching over to the camera so that you can take a picture of it sitting right there. So you don't have to necessarily do it up front. But if you already have it in your photo library, you can go. Uh, you can go either way. So I'm gonna try one just with the camera now and uh, take yeah, a picture of great. a report which I got off the internet, just a sample report. I'll just take the picture, and uh, and then I'll just say, tap use photo. Use a photo, and then do I hit save here? You do. You so you'll tap save, and then you'll see that the button has changed to say uploaded. Do I have to hit save again? And then and then you do have. So now we're hitting save in the upper right hand corner, which is saving this report. All together, and we'll see that on 918, uh, we have now a radiology test that's added as well. Great. So let's go check out uh, the other quickly the other types of tests that we can record. Uh, there's proced Let's do procedures or and interventions, and we'll again tap enter data and test. And these are simply check boxes of what you had done on a particular day. So again, these are all the different procedures or interventions that we let you keep track of. And you're just gonna, they're check boxes, so you can turn on and off as many as you want. So I'll record one uh, for today. I think I may have actually recorded one for this date already, but we'll see. Um, and I'll hit save. Yeah, you can hit save. Yep. And I've got and, that. And what about other tests, blood tests? Can we do those? Sure, so, so that would be under lab data, so that's the next one we'll look at. And then the same thing, enter data tests. And, and so you can record values for each of these four things. I changed the date to April because I know I have some lab tests in the, in the months of July, August, September. So I'm gonna just get hit hemoglobin because I did get that blood test done. And I'll put in a value for that. Um, I had, uh, say, I, say I had bled a lot, uh, my value might be low. People that bleed a lot sometimes have low iron, so I'm going to put it just for sake of looking at something that looks somewhat realistic, put a low iron. And oxygen level was uh, pretty good, uh, was very good. And the BNP, which is can be a lab that looks at possible for heart failure, which is, isn't very common but can occur, I'll put a value in uh, for that as well. And um, so these are the lab values that we put. Now we need to again hit save after we've entered this data. That's right. So, so save in the upper right hand corner. We'll save this test, and then and if was, you scroll down this list back to April. My goodness! So we have a lot of uh, lab value from the blood test. So we got to scroll yep. down. There it is. So there it is. We have uh, on four fifteen. We have that lab test that you just entered. Great. So let's go to the last one, which is transfusions and infusions, and this is again pretty simple. Uh, you can record whether you had an iron infusion and or a blood transfusion and how many units of blood. And I had to hit save again, right? Yep. After every test, save in the upper right-hand corner. And then, and then you'll see that enters the list. So, so this is a really nice way um, for you to see all of the data that you've entered in the app. But let's say that you'd like to just see your transfusions. In the upper right hand corner, you'll notice next to profile, we have another button called filter. And filter is allowing you to turn on and off uh, the, different, the different types of data. And if you, if you tap apply filter now, you'll see that this list now gets limited to where were the transfusions that I had. If you're looking for that specific type of data, then you, know, you don't want to necessarily have to scroll through all of that to find them and, and potentially miss some. So, so it's up to you how you want to filter that data, or you can always tap clear filters and go back to seeing all the data. That'd be a really nice way to see when you had blood transfusions or iron transfusions. Yeah, it really, those. it like is that. because, like that a lot. you know, when you're entering, if you're entering, um, you know, your blood loss data consistently, then, then it's nice to have in here because this is another way that you can, 
you can uh, easily look at it as well as see what else happened on that day, which you don't get from the calendar. The calendar is just showing you the information about the, the bleeding that you're, that you're doing. Uh, but the calendar uh, in the dashboard isn't showing you when you're having procedures or, or testing done. So, so this screen is nice to be able to see that and be able to filter it as well. So can I filter it with what I share with my doctor? Say I you can. So when, so, um, and in fact, let's do that now. Let's, let's share some information with our providers. And so, uh, we tapped the share button data and, and at the top of the, the list. And now we're able to, to tap on our different providers. Let's say, uh, uh, Dr. Neri has just, you know, asked us to send the data that we've been, that we've been compiling in the app. Um, you know, we can tap on his name in the list and you'll see that a, a ring will go, uh, the, the, the ring around each of those people turns red for any of the ones that you would like to, to add to the email. You're also allowed to CC yourself so that in addition to sending this off to your physician, you're going to get the email that you sent as well. And then, um, you know, after the, after you've picked the who now we're in that section you were just talking about, which is, you know, what w would you like to send them? So maybe they're not interested in your daily nosebleed data. They're interested in the testing that you've had done along the way. And that's, you know, maybe, maybe this is a new physician and they want to get, um, you know, an idea of the background and they're not looking for that, that daily bleeding data or not just yet, then, uh, you can turn on and off those, uh, those different choices of what you want to share. And it looks like I can decide how far back I want to send the data. That's right. You can, you can choose to send back six months, a year, three years, or, or all of the, the data that you had. So, um, so that's nice because if you want to send your nosebleed data to your, to your physician, uh, you know, they probably really don't want three years of your nosebleed data. So you may just opt for six months, but for some of these other, uh, ex tests that you don't get done on a very frequent basis, uh, you know, three years may be very appropriate right. for them to be able to see imaging you know, studies, for instance, right? It, absolutely. Right. And right. then th they're able to see your progression. So then I just hit export to email. Is that right? Yep. Hit export to email at the bottom. And then what happens here is, so we're putting together, um, we're putting together this data for you. And then what's going to happen is we're going to shoot off to your email program, just like we did, um, when we, when we had set up the app and we had to answer the questions, um, you know, in our original, in, in, uh, the original questions about our condition. So we've put together an email that includes, uh, two attachments, um, as well as the, the pre-addressed it to the physicians that you asked it to go to. Of course, this assumes that you've entered their email addresses. If you haven't entered their email addresses, we can't do that. Uh, and then if you ask to CC yourself, then we've added you in the CC line as well. So what are the two different, uh, attachments? One's a PDF, one's a Excel file. So the PDF is, uh, is a nice viewable look at the data that you asked to send. And the PDF will include any images that you've saved along with your, in, in the, in the, uh, radiology and imaging section. If you, if you, if you took any photos with your camera, like we were just talking about, or if you, if you added any from your photo library, they're going to be a part of this PDF. If, if you, if you selected radiology and imaging as something to send the second attachment, uh, which is the dot CSV file is an output of your data in a, in a format that is really more for, um, someone who's looking at it from a research perspective. So if I was on a clinical trial, they that's wanted, right. They send all the data to them. They would use that. They would use that file to to easily get that out. Um, it doesn't contain. Can I delete that? Uh, you certainly Excel, can. If I wanted to, just highlight it and just just push on and delete it. Yeah. It d again, depends on your email program. Um, oh, I see. I could get rid. Of it just like yeah. That. It, you just tap the yeah. Put the cursor in front of it and tap the back. So so then we would just be sending the PDF and and that's perfectly fine. So, so from here, you know, like with any e email that you send, you hit the send button and then we come right back to the app. So if you wanted to send anything else, uh, or to anyone else, we're still back in the shared data area. Uh, but to exit this, you simply press back in the upper left hand corner and that will take you back to the data and tests or select another navigation point on the bottom.
How about charts? Charting. I think we're ready for some charting. So I like this part. This uh, is the coolest part. This is this is, and, and you know, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if if you take your device into your physician, they'll be interested in seeing this too, because this is a a really nice way to see um, your your data kind of in a, a more overview perspective. So before we leave, you know, we're looking at this what's turned out to be a a, a fairly lengthy list of daily data in this data and test section, which is nice because you can go, dr you know, drill into any day and see what happened. But, you know, to get a better overview, you know, you would tap on the charts at the bottom. So let's do that. And now we're looking at um, an empty chart, which we'll fix that in, in a minute. And, you know, a couple of quick things I want to point out before we start showing data on it. Um, in the top, you, you know, you can select the interval that you'd like to see. So do you want to see one month worth of data versus a whole year of data at one time in the panel? And then you'll also notice at the bottom of the chart are these red dots. And these red dots are a really nice way to see what testing or procedures you had done on any given point in the chart. So as we start looking at your data, uh, which we're going to do next, you'll be able to see if you saw the data kind of uh, changed in direction. Um, well, it's interesting to know why did you know what was going on at that time that might have caused it to change. So um, I'm going to let you choose which one you want to pick. So here's your hemoglobin. And and so this is because you've entered in lab t lab data, you've entered a number of different values for hemoglobin over time. Um, but as you see, there are points in the, in the graph where it changes direction significantly. And by tapping on any of those red dots on the bottom, you're able to see what happened that might have caused that to either go you know, hopefully down, right? So or, in, this case, in this case, maybe somebody was having a lot of nosebleeds. We could look at their epistaxis severity scores or they had electrical cautery of the of the That's nose, right. uh, and uh, you can see that their hemoglobin uh, went up after that. We could also look at other lab values besides sure. hemoglobin. Sure, uh, Iron levels, uh, same thing. Yep. Um, you know, just I, I put this data in. That, uh, after a, a particular procedure, um, you know, the iron levels may have gone up. You can look at oxygen levels, which don't terribly vary from away from, much away from 100 typically. And then... Um, BNP, which is, uh, it's rare for that to be elevated, but some people get congestive heart failure and you can see BNP. So this patient had cautery and uh, their blood counts got better and their congestive heart failure laboratories got uh, improved as well. Uh, they got better, you want a low number there. And then, and then finally the ESS score, same thing. This patient had the cautery uh, here and you can see that their ESS score uh, uh, trended upwards uh, afterwards. So, um, so these are the, the diff different Those values the that you can chart uh, over time. We thought this would be really interesting for people to sort of make an association between an intervention potentially and a change in their lives. And values. I think, yeah, I think that's really the important thing is is uh, sometimes it's hard on a daily basis to really remember and correlate. Oh, when you're getting better and when you're getting worse. I mean, hopefully with every intervention you're getting better, but it's nice to see. And 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 it, you know, again. Uh, with some interventions, uh, you might have an intervention that, that you don't particularly respond to, and you'll notice with that intervention, maybe not a lot changed in your okay. chart. And, and it's really helpful to you as the user slash patient and also your physician to really be able to see what are you responding to and not responding to. So, so absolutely, we, we, you know, um, we all agree that this was a really nice way to be able to view all of this information that you're putting in instead of just sharing it with somebody. Yeah. I'll just so, say this is unique for the chronic disease management apps. I mean, this is done. They've, this is done. Uh, this looks really well. It's laid out well. It works really well. And I know this was a lot of work on Arbor Moon's uh, uh, standpoint to get this looking so beautiful. So I'm I'm excited about this. Yeah, we're we're really hoping that that it's things like this that help uh, that help patients really be able to see their progression in a way that that they haven't been able to see before you know when you live with this obviously you are living with it on a daily basis and sometimes it's really hard to get an overview perspective even for people that are data minded people uh you know this is why statistics is such 
so important in medicine yeah. to be able to take a, a broad overview, look at what's really happening from a broader perspective. So, so, well, so speaking of broader perspective, maybe we should show them the last part. Yeah, uh, I the think frequently asked questions about uh, HAC. Is that okay? Yeah, I think that's great. You know, this is this is another really important area um, because this is this is sort of your lifeline to the outside world. So. Um, you know, along the top, you'll see we have a couple of, I'm going to call them navigation points. Um, the first one will take you to the Cure HHT website, um, which is curehht.org. Uh, and they really have a fantastic website of information. And, and um, we, you know, it's really nice to be able to get you right there if, if you've got questions. I mean, there's a lot about, uh, there's a lot about HHT that, um, that's out there for it to read more, about more than will ever fit on this app. Right? That's, there's, there's hundreds of times more information. Than that's right. And, and really their website is so good. There was no reason that to even try to recreate that experience within the, in the app. Um, there's a section about this app, which just kind of gives you some information about, um, cure and the, and the creation of this app. Uh, the third navigation point along the top is, um, is the, what is HHT? And we saw this in the beginning when we set up the app before we even started the setup process on that first screen. Uh, you had the opportunity to go in and, and see these screens about what is HHT. But this is, you know, this is really nice. If you've got HHT and you're talking to somebody, a family member, somebody who wants a brief idea of what this whole thing is all about so they can kind of have an understanding of what you're going through, you know, hey, tap on the what is HHT, hand them your phone, and there's two oh, good, good summary idea. screens yeah. of of what is HHT so that, you know, you don't have to, you know, constantly try to explain it. And then the last is the Facebook link. And then the so Facebook link. And I then think they have thousands of uh, members of their uh, Facebook group. I've, I go on there frequently. I, I, I've, I've learned a lot from patients just reading the uh, HHT and uh, page. This is why social media is so important because, uh, you know, like with many different types of afflictions, you can really feel like you're on an Island with, you know, nobody understands what I'm, how can anyone understand what I'm going through? This is just so, so horrible. And then it's really when you start being able to connect with other people uh, that have the same thing that you realize you're, you're not as alone as you've probably see, felt you were. I see exactly. I see a lot of uh, patients supporting each other. Yeah, absolutely. And then, so we, the last is we have, uh, I think 11 or 12 different topics. I mean, some of these things a lot of patients know about and, uh, lung AVMs or brain, but there are some things as you drill down a little lower about surgery in HHT or anesthesia in HHT or anemia and iron and, and iron supplement. So there's a, there's a fair amount of uh, information. We'll just hit surgery in HHT. Some things you really need to let your surgeon or anesthesiologist know about HHT. Anemia and HHT, including some things you can do for your anemia, uh, for, for iron deficiency. Uh, pregnancy, really important that patients uh, that might be getting pregnant in the near future uh, know about pregnancy and HHT. So again, it's not everything out there. There's a lot more on the Cure HHT website, but I think this is a really nice resource. Perhaps some of your, your younger patients will go to this because it's on a mobile app. Uh, they can read about it in a very non-threatening way and, uh, and read about it in their own time and space. So we're hopeful that we can get, you know, some of the younger adults that live in the mobile app world, uh, learning about HHT and learning some of the very important screening uh, tests that, that absolutely need to be done to be, to be safe and healthy. What I really like about this section uh, too is that a lot of times, and uh, it's a little bit different for you because you are the physician, so there's nothing that's, that a physician is going to say to you that you're not going to uh, immediately sort of know and appreciate, but a lot of times I'll be at my physician and I might hear a term that I don't connect with. Uh, and, and this, you know, in this FAQ section, um, you know, a lot of the, the, the overview, the basics are covered here. So, you know, if you hear your doctor talk about liver AVMs or lung AVMs and, and they may give you an explanation, maybe you understand it all, maybe you don't, maybe just later you want to refer to it, you want to talk to your significant other about what happened at your appointment, you can go into here and get a nice explanation um, of what these different terms mean. And, and you know, I, I didn't write them. The person who wrote them is sitting right next to me. But I will tell you that, you know, it was, a, it was really, I didn't feel like it was written in a way that 
is, is over my head in terms of being able to understand what these things are. And, and I probably learned more about HHT along the way from reading these FAQs than anything else that I encountered. Uh, you know, the Cure HHT website is indeed a really great resource, but the difference between the Cure HHT website and these FAQs are that these FAQs allow you to get right to this explanation of this particular topic. And the Cure HHT website is so wonderful and complete that when you go there, there's an awful lot to look at, which is exactly its purpose, is to, is to provide you that comprehensive uh, base of information. So, so uh, we really liked including these FAQs as part of the app. It made a ton of sense to us, and um, and and so far everyone really has seemed to like them. So, so those are our four main sections of the app. Uh, the last thing I want to touch on before we're done with this video is um, is in the upper right hand corner we've been we've been popping in and out of it, but but because we covered it when we set up the app, uh, we wanted to sort of cover it again at the end. Uh, is the profile section? So now we're in our settings area. And you're going to notice it looks really familiar to all the information and even the, 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 the way it looks from when you initially set up the app. So we're in the profile section. And again, this is where you entered all your personal information. Um, this is also where you can change the entry method for how you're tracking your, your nosebleeds. So if you decide that you want to track per interval and you were tracking every bleed or vice versa, you can always come into here and switch it on the bottom section. You'll also notice that as you move tabs to team that these are all of the medical team members or anybody else that you entered into the app and you can edit them and you can of course add new ones as well. So notifications. Again, this is uh, pretty much identical to what you saw when you first set up the app, but of course, this is your chance to go in and, and edit it. Uh, if you have a nosebleed reminder set up, you can either turn that on or off or change the time of day that you want that reminder to get to you, as well as adjusting the parameters for your medical test reminders and the notification for uh, how frequently you'd like to be notified to back the app up. So the last tab is really the, the new tab here, and this is the tab that you'll come to when you actually want to do the backup of your data. So the way this, is, the way this works is that um, there's a, a button that says backup data now, and when you tap that button, what's going to happen is your, the app is going to create a file with all of your settings in the app, uh, all the data that you've entered, everything you've done from a settings perspective. It's going to put it into a file and then it's going to attach that file to an email. And you're going to want to email that to yourself. And you'll notice that in the email to area, we have the email that you put in as your personal email. And that's again why it's so important that you do put that in there so that this is an easy process for you. And then you're simply going to hit the send button and send it to yourself. And then you'll have that backup sitting in your email. If you ever need to reinstall it into the app or if you get a new phone, for example, you're going to want to use your most recent backup file that you emailed to yourself as a way to get your data back. Peter, what if I have two different or three different email addresses on my iPhone, how can I choose which uh, email address it gets sent from? It depends on your email program as to how you do that, but you can always uh, you can always use in the email program uh, the you can select the the sending uh, address that you want to send the email from. So if you work for an organization that may be restrictive in terms of uh, sending attachments, you can edit that here. Thanks. So I'll send now. So you can send that. And then in your email, uh, you'll see that you get that email that you sent yourself and you'll have that attachment. And all you need to really do is save that attachment in your email. You don't need to do anything with it. Um, the important thing if you're getting a new device is that, you know, what, before you install the Cure HHT app on the new device, on your old device, the last thing you want to do is do this backup so you get all of the data that you had in the app and not use a backup from three months ago because the backup from three months ago will be all of the data in the app up until that point. What, uh, how often do you think I should back it up? I mean, if I'm really putting a lot of data in here, I probably want to back it up 
once a month or something just to be sure I don't lose a lot of data if my phone should crack and die? Yeah, I think once a month, if you want to be aggressive about it every two weeks, it really does depend though on how much you're using the app to record your data. If you're recording um, your nosebleed data, for example, uh, monthly, and you're not putting a lot of information in other than that, then you could probably even get away with a backup every three months if you wanted to. Okay. Um, you know, the big thing is that we always never know when something's going to happen to our, our device. And so whatever you haven't backed up will not make it back into the app. And I want to quickly give a, a, a reason why we did it this way. Um, in Apple... Apple does not allow us to save personal medical information in the backup of your device. So this is the most important thing for as a user to understand. Even if you're backing your device up to iCloud, your data for this app isn't allowed to be backed up to iCloud. So we have this procedure so you can back this data up and that's why you need to use it because if you restore from an iCloud backup, you'll get the app back, but you won't get any of your of your medical data within the app. Right. That sounds very important. Great, thank you. Okay, so you can save that and then you see we're back to our dashboard. And I think that that concludes the, the video for the demonstration of this app. Thank you everybody. And um, you're gonna find good resources to if you need anything else you find good resources on the curehht.org website so please feel free to to visit the website and you can get any other uh, information about the app that you need there